Welcome back. You're still tuned into Halftime Report on CNBC TV 18. We have been talking about markets, but let's put focus on the capex trends now and talk macros. According to a report by Nirmal Bank, private capex is now above pre-pandemic levels and is led by chemicals, renewable energy versus metals in FY22 and FY21. To discuss the trends going forward and the overall picture as well, we are joined by Mahesh Vyas, MD and CEO of Center for Monitoring the Indian Economy, and Teresa John, who's the Deputy Head Research and Economist of Nirmal Bank, who's the author of the report as well, joining us on the show to discuss more on the capex trends as well. Uh, Mr. Vyas, Teresa, thanks a lot for joining us and speak, speaking with us on CNBC TV 18. Uh, Ms. John, let me come to you first because the report suggests that overall capex, which is up 2.9% on a YOY basis, is still down 9.3% if we compare it to pre-pandemic levels. Can you give us a sense of where this decline is coming from and which are the growth drivers as far as capital expenditure is concerned? Thank you. Uh, so what we see is that uh, the overall capex is uh, below, uh, still, still around 10% below pre-pandemic uh, levels. And the decline is mainly coming from the uh, central government uh, capex pipeline and the state government capex pipeline. Uh, whereas if you look at the private sector capex, uh, capex so for April to November uh, 2023, 20, uh, when you compare it to uh, April to uh, November, uh, you know, in, in uh, uh, FY20, uh, we are uh, uh, around about 52% uh, above the pre-pandemic level and uh, on a year-on-year -year basis as well, we're up around 35%. So it's private sector CAPEX, which is kind of leading and now above pre-pandemic levels. Mm -hmm. And within private CAPEX, the two sectors which are doing well, uh, mainly it is chemicals, which is accounting for around 45% uh, of the CAPEX uh, announcements. And second, you have the renewable sector. Okay. Mr. Vyas, uh, you know, I wanted your thoughts in this private capex data, which Theresa is talking about, where she is saying that, yes, private capex is picked up, but the concentration of the capex is limited to only two sectors, which is basically chemicals as well as renewable energy, which have really been uh, the toast of a lot of, uh, you know, maybe even the markets to a certain extent. So in your sense, uh, is that your reading as well, that uh, private capex, while it has picked up, is very concentrated and not broad-based. Uh, thank you. So, um, what Ms. Teresa is saying is uh, quite right. There is an increase in uh, interest in the private sector and making investments, and the government has uh, not been as active as the private sector has been. But, you know, a small correction over here. This is not CapEx. This is CapEx intentions. So, there's a difference. There's a very significant increase in private sector capex intentions. There is a concentration in chemicals and renewables, but uh, what is important is that earlier this uh, these new in, uh, investment proposals used to come largely from just one or two business houses. That has broadened now and has gone to many more states. So there is a broadening. There is a concentration in the private sector. Within the private sector, the investment is largely into renewables and chemicals. But mind you, that chemicals and uh, renewables and energy at large are the ones that are really capital intensive. One cannot expect leather, for example, or garments to show large capex mm -hmm. uh, in terms of rupees value. So I agree that there is an increase in the intentions to invest by the private sector. And uh, this should not be misunderstood as capex capex is still a far away okay so mr vyas in your views what are the key risks that we are seeing to the investment cycle the intention do you expect it to convert into execution as well or there are some hurdles to that as well so uh, we see we are surprised by the slow rate of implementation of projects in 22 23 because 2021 21 22 as well to some extent was impacted by the pandemic the lockdown, and therefore, there was a huge backlog of investment projects that were expected to be completed in 22, 23. Uh, so when the year began, we expected 10 trillion rupees worth of projects to get completed, when the highest number in the past was around six, six and a half trillion or so. But half the year is over, and we have still just seen about two and a half trillion rupees worth of investments getting completed. So there is still significant sluggishness in the completion of projects and therefore the real capex cycle has still not started okay all right so that's uh, quite significant and that's um, you know intention of capex in the private space but theresa your data indicates 
that the central government capex pipeline is even lagging pre-pandemic levels. Uh, for example, April to November FY23 data indicates that capex announcements are down by 76% year on year and 71% below pre-pandemic levels. Uh, these are just announcements. Um, what is the kind of data that is indicating complete execution from the central government side when it comes to capex? And where would it probably be concentrated on as compared to pre-pandemic levels? This is execution that, that I'm talking about, completed capex. So actually, uh, pre-pandemic, because the private sector was hardly doing or even announcing any capex at that point in time, uh, a lot, uh, I mean, the central government was actually taking the lead. So you had a strong pipeline before the pandemic, and I think um, some of that uh, were, they were able to push through. You know, when uh, there was no private capex happening, uh, you know, during the pandemic. So that's why you saw. Uh, I mean, during the pandemic, we had a lot of projects uh, by uh, NHAI being implemented, where there was any other uh, when uh, other sectors, you know, were largely uh, not active uh, at all. Uh, so. Uh, in terms of capex announcements, uh, while uh, NHEI and the renewable energy sector again was uh, the leading sector during uh, FI21 and FI22, now we've seen a shift back to railways. So that was the case uh, before the uh, pandemic as well. So railways accounted for uh, you know over 40% of projects in the pre-pandemic period, and now we are back to uh, uh, that level of pro around 37% uh, accounting for by railways in the period April to November FI23 in terms of. Uh, the capex uh, announcements. Uh, that said, as you uh, pointed out, the uh, the quantum of projects has uh, announcements has significantly dwindled when you compare it to the pre-pandemic period. So the concern is uh, going forward. If the private sector does not actually implement some of these announcements, the government also does not have a pipeline in place, you know, to go ahead and uh, kind of uh, take the baton from the private sector like they have done in the past. Okay, uh, Teresa uh, and Mr. Vyas, just hold on. We'll have to get into a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll continue this discussion on the other side. Stay tuned. In discussion with Mr. Vyas of uh, CMIE as well as Teresa John, the economist at, Nir at uh, Nirmal Bank Securities about the current CAPEX cycle. Uh, Mr. Vyas, you know, Theresa was apprising us about the details with regards to the central government CAPEX pipeline, and that is still lagging pre-pandemic levels. But um, where exactly does it stand according to you? And uh, do you think that the state governments could probably uh, be lagging behind even more? And what can we expect probably in the second half? Yes, you're right. The state governments are lagging behind on CAPEX spending. So we see this in the uh, in the financial statements of uh, state governments and central government. So the central government spending on CapEx has been pretty aggressive this year in the first half, but the state governments are lagging behind. What we have seen from past data is that the state governments usually catch up in the second half of the year. So maybe there will be some turnaround as the year goes ahead in terms of government spending on CapEx. So far, it's been half and half. Both state and central governments have equal contribution to capex and the central government is doing well and not the state government okay uh, teresa you have spoken about how chemical sector is contributing to what uh, the growth that we are seeing in the private segment uh, what were the sectors that contributed earlier and are seeing a decline right now and within chemicals as well there are so many uh, segments right so where is the most amount of money intended to go for now yeah, so compared to, uh, say, uh, FI21 uh, and 22, uh, we had uh, two sectors that were leading then. One was metals, uh, you know, because metal prices had started going up uh, in, uh, during the pandemic, uh, and that led to a lot of uh, CAPEX announcements in that sector. And then we had the electronic sector, which was mainly uh, led by the PLI uh, scheme. Uh, but most of that uh, CAPEX uh, uh, announcement seemed to be complete because they have to complete the projects in order to get the PLI uh, incentives and uh, we have actually seen a pickup in uh, electronics uh, exports, uh, you know, so, uh, on a year-on-year -year, uh, basis uh, with that with that uh, capex uh, actually coming on uh, stream. So from electronics and metals, now we've seen a shift to chemicals, and chemicals is, uh, uh, you know, as we spoke earlier, it's uh, accounted for around 45% of, of the uh, capex announcements. Within uh, the uh, chemical sector, the top sector is uh, the, uh, the green hydrogen and green uh, ammonia. Uh, again, this is a few large projects in these sectors. And then 
uh, you have a, a alumina project by uh, adani which is accounting for another 10% so um, these green hydrogen green ammonia projects plus the uh, adani alumina projects uh, accounts for around 75% of the uh, capex announcements in the chemical sector and then uh, we have a large number of projects coming in from for uh, you know uh, ethanol uh, refineries because of a government uh, incentive in terms of value they may not be very large but the number of projects uh, are quite large we are so um, you know unemployment as per the cmi has risen to a three month high uh, what is it indicating uh, do you think that it could rise beyond this 8% that you've released in terms of data well i i don't think it will rise much beyond 8% what we have seen in the recent past is that the unemployment rate kind of hovers between 6 and a half and 8 and a half percent max so at 8% we are at the upper end of that range uh, but the unemployment rate is unlikely to deteriorate uh, any further because uh, in the last couple of months we are seeing the labor markets being a little more giving us a little more positive news Uh, most importantly there's an increase in the labor force participation rate which i think is a more important indicator so no i don't expect a major deterioration uh, in fact the rate at which the deterioration was happening earlier has kind of stopped oh. so we have possibly hit a bottom hmm. and we should be seeing things improving from here that is a uh, good uh, news to hear and on that positive note mr vyas sirisa thank you so much for joining us and speaking with us telling us all about the capex trends in india inc and the governments as well time for a break now prakash gaba will join in with some